14 days or 30 days. If the squatter does not leave, ini dah on ke? Dah on. Okay, alright. So I cannot speak in Malay anymore, yeah? Alright, our our uh, lecture today is on adverse possession. Um, and section 48 of the National Land Code deals with this. This is the position of squatters. So let us go to the uh, concept. I'll show you a few graphics. In Sabah, there is uh, an island which is called Pulau Gaya. And you will see many um, places where they live in this type of huts, yeah? which is really not permanent structure on the sea. Yeah? So there are children there also. You see clothes hanging. You don't know where the rubbish goes, the sewage goes right into the uh, seawater. Yeah? So these are substandard houses, lah, huh? houses which are not legal. Nearer to home, in Ampang, this is a few years ago, there was a place called Kampung Berembang yeah, in Ampang. Uh, it was a squatter settlement. There was no title given to those who occupied the uh, buildings there. And there was a notice by the local authority, eh, Dewan Bahasa, eh, Dewan Bahasa pula, Dewan Mandaraya. Um, <laughs> the settlement. Yeah, so typically this is what is done. You see the officers, uh, these are police officers, so police come in, yeah, land office and, uh, administrators, the police comes in uh, as well as the local authority. Yeah, so these are authorities and this is usually the last petora uh, kata, last step lah, after a few steps have been done, yeah, notices have been done. So they came and you see these people here probably asked by their parents to just lie down on the mattress. No bulldozer will want to bulldoze these people. Eh? So this is just a tactic eh? by those occupying uh, land illegally to, to show that we don't want to leave. We've been living here for a long, long time. Yeah. So please recognize our right. So we will see how the law in the National Land Code deals with this problem. Yeah? So the issue or the thing that I would like you to think now is does the law assist those who are squatters in Malaysia? Yeah? Can we find a legal solution? Yeah, that is what you should think about throughout this lecture. Now what squatters usually do and usually they don't call themselves squatters. They tak kata saya visiting kan. Who wants to? Yeah? <laughs> Who wants to call yourself a squatter? So what the groups usually do is they will group together and they will say that my grandparents came, opened up this this place and we are urban pioneers. Yeah, urban pioneers. And we helped to build this city. Yeah? We lived here, we worked and now it's a developed city because of us. So why are you asking us to leave? Yeah? So they try and get help, um, they go to the local authority, local authority says no, we can't help you, you don't have title, yeah? And then they go to the land office, try to meet with the DO, I have uh, invited you to my kenduri, how can you do this to me? Yeah, DOs go to kenduri. Well, the DO say, I'm so sorry, uh, under the law, this is the best that we can do, yeah? We can offer you uh, another place and relocate you for a while, because we need to develop this land according to the structure plan or local plan. Yeah? So also no help from the land office. So they go and see the local politician, yeah? state assemblyman of the area possibly. And the local politicians will usually take up the cause yeah? and um, will ask um, the squatters to either pick it or there will be a cerama, especially during the elections, yeah? uh, to help the underprivileged in society. Yeah. See what placards they are holding up. Yeah, kami mahu hak kami di PKL terus and all that. Uh, so this is an MP helping to speak out. Yeah, on behalf of squatters. Now 
In regards to the problem of squatters, sorry, yeah, I'll go back to the last slide. Um, I don't think we have internet, but if you get a copy of the slides later, and if you have internet connection, just click on, on this uh, link, you will find one of the um, MPs in Petaling Jaya, Tony Poha, I don't know whether he's still there, this was, this was like three years ago. Um, he, he went on site to Sungai Kayu Ara. Anybody has gone to the Kayu Ara area in PJ? Uh, you've been in PJ, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, there's a place, uptown, uptown, makan uptown? Uh, okay. Sungai Kayu Ara is very near uptown. You will see um, along Sungai Kayu Ara because nobody really goes there. There's a residential area just uh, next to it. Yeah. But if you go further, and to the outskirts, you will see a settlement just next to the river. Yeah? And these are usually Indonesian immigrants yeah? uh, who work in PJ. Yeah? They work um, as cleaners um, in hospitals yeah? um, and, and, and many types of workers, but they live there. And Tony Moore was showing how the, the river quality, the uh, water of the river is black in color. It's like a dead river, yeah, because all the sewage and waste just goes into the river. So squatters do represent also some environmental problems. Yeah? So there is a need actually to balance, if possible, if you are the uh, state authority or the government, to balance the right of those who have no housing, yeah, also with the rights of those who want to live in a clean environment, yeah, and also you're talking about safety, about security. Imagine, yeah, that you also pulau kaya. How the houses, I think if there's just a bit of wind or gale, it will just, you know, fall into the sea. Yeah? So we're talking about proper housing. And the United Nations has, in its Charter on Human Rights, recognized uh, the right to accommodation as a human right. And yeah? also in Islam, I'll show you also some hadith, yeah, that... Uh, the right to housing is a right that the government should secure for the people. All right, now we go to our statute. I think I asked you to just glance through section 48. Yeah? First of all, our National Land Code does not use the term squatter. You will not find that word anywhere in your statute. Yeah? It uses the word, the phrase adverse possession. It's a very legal term. Okay? So, section 48. No adverse possession against the state. Meaning to say, on state land, you cannot go to court if you are a squatter and you're on state land, no title, no license, nothing. If the state asks you to leave, you cannot go to the court and argue that I am in legal possession because I've been here for years and years and years and the state has not done anything. That's not an argument that can be accepted by virtue of section 48. Yeah? So section 48 says no adverse possession yeah? against the state authority. So no matter how long you've been on that land, even if the state does nothing, you have no right. In certain other jurisdictions, now, like France, like Sweden, um, European countries, and also some countries in the Middle East, they recognize the concept of adverse possession. Surprisingly. In their jurisdictions, generally, the years can change. If you are on a piece of land for 12 years, be it state land or private land, and nobody says anything, yeah? you've been there without interruption, then you have a right to go to court under the law and say, long user has made my stay here legal. Yeah? But in Malaysia, no, because Section 48 clearly does not accept the concept of adverse possession. Are you with me? So, Bolea, what is adverse possession? Okay. Now, together with section 48, you need to cross-refer to section 425 of the NLC, National Land Code, 
please look at section 425. Can I get someone to read it for me? Anyone? Section 425. Who would like to read it? Unlawful occupation, etc. of state land, reserve land or mining land. One, any person who without lawful authority, A, occupies or erects any building on any state land, reserve land or mining land, or B, clears, flow, digs, encloses or cultivates any such land or part thereof, <coughs> or C, cuts or removes any timber or produce on or from such land, shall be guilty of an offence and liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 10,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year. Okay, so that tells you, yeah, section 45 tells you that being in unlawful possession of state land and doing anything without permission on state land is a statutory offence. Yeah, it is a statutory offence that carries a penalty, yeah, including imprisonment. How much is the fine? 10,000 ringgit. Yeah, it has not been amended to increase. Lah. It has stayed 10,000 since a long time ago. So 10,000 or one year in prison, okay? Or both, yeah? So this is one of the things that should be um, advised to a client who comes to you, yeah? And, um, and relates to you, the position, and you come to the conclusion, oh, this person might be in adverse possession, yeah? So section 48 read with section 425. Now there's another section that you need to also look at and this is section 341. Section 341 deals with the right of the uh, owner of the land, the registered proprietor. Um, and 341 as opposed to 48 which deals with state land. Eh? 341 says, long occupation, I'm just simplifying it for you, Long occupation of private land will not prohibit or stop the owner of that land from going to court and getting a valid order of possession. Yeah? So section 341 just uh, stresses on the fact that long possession, no matter how long, cannot take away the right of the owner to go to court to claim back his land. Yeah? So again, you see that the National Land Code seems to take the side of the government as well as the registered owner in a question relating to rights of squatters. Under the right in the first place. Yeah? So that's another thing you should put in your mind. Yeah? When you say hak kami, right of squatters, you just need to focus or zoom into that word. Is there really any right for squatters? Any questions so far? Alright, we'll move on. Now, the National Land Code also, um, well, if you want to describe what adverse possession is, this is also a good way. The law of adverse possession upholds the estates. Estates is ownership. Lah. In land of person who has no formal ownership. Yeah, so that's just putting it in a nice legal uh, explanation. Lah. This we have gone to. This we have gone to. Now, I would like to just bring your attention to the fact that the National Land Code has got provisions uh, for enforcement. Yeah? In Malaysia, many times, uh, whenever there is something that occurs in relation to land, yeah, um, people always complain, oh, what, why is there no action being taken? Why is there no action being taken? Yeah? And then they say, oh, the law is weak, the law is weak. It's not the law that is weak. In most cases, our laws are just fine. It's the people who implement the law. Yeah, so let's take a look at an example. Our National Land Code has got provisions to deal with uh, squatters. Yeah? Uh, and this is under section 426A until 426D. If you'd like to just glance later. 
basically these sections allow an authorized person and you have seen just now in the photos that I, sh I showed you yeah? police officers, local authority officers, land administrators yeah? authorized officers for example any police officer not below the rank of inspector yeah? so it has got to be inspector and above the registrar meaning the registrar of titles the land administrator at the land office also can come in that operation as well as the settlement officer who works at the land office he goes down to the ground and does investigations yeah? to without warrant tak payah warrant word yeah? the law allows A. arrest a person committing the offence what offence? unlawful occupation of state land ni pasal state land sahaja we're not talking about private land yeah? B. Seize any property used to commit the offence. What property do you think this means? The house. Macam mana eh? Seize the house? Uh, if the house is probably made out of, uh, not bricks, yeah? um, planks, the planks can be taken. Just now you saw mattresses, mattresses can be taken. Anything that, that uh, helps the person who's in illegal occupation to be in occupation yeah? the old year, yeah? the kitchen, the cabinet, whatever they can take it, yeah? they can take it under the law lah. and lastly, and this is I think last resort demolish, destroy or remove any building on the land yeah? so that shows you how the National Land Code has the power or has given the power, has prescribed for enforcement yeah, in cases of illegal occupation of state land. Okay? Um, but of course, you, as I said just now, if you're the government of the day and you start doing this to all squatters, then the next election, nobody's going to vote for you. This is common sense. Yeah? If you begin, begin to be so tough on squatters, and these are people who sometimes have no uh, alternative. They've come from the kampongs, they come to find work, yeah? And so their friends tell them, oh, there's a cheap place to go and uh, rent. So the, the friend brings him, him or her to this place, not knowing that it's a squatter settlement. Say will be late, yeah? Sementara saya say will be late kat sini because it's affordable, yeah? And suddenly the authorities come in, you hear of stories of uh, settlements being raised in the middle of the night. This happens also, yeah? Unfortunately. So how do you deal with this problem if you are the government? Yeah, so that's a question again and again I ask throughout this lecture. Right, now I bring you to the locus classicus. No land law student can explain the concept of adverse possession without referring to section 48 as now. Section 425, Section 341, and CDA's case. Okay? This is Government of the State of Perak versus CDA and others. About 99 others. Okay, what happened in CDA's case is that um, there was a time in Seberang Perak, in Perak, yeah? Perak Tengah, uh, where the lands there were very fertile for planting or cultivating padi. If you go to Seberang Perak, Kampung Gajah area, it's just flat land there. Yeah? As, 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 uh, kata, um, as green as the eyes can see, far off, yeah? it's all green. So it was fertile. So people from all over Peninsula Malaysia, from uh, the east coast, from the north, from the south, yeah? came to Seberang Perak and wanted to settle there yeah, to start padi cultivation. So Sidi and his friends were one of these people. Yeah, they considered themselves pioneers, yeah, peneroka in Malay, yeah, to open up fertile soil. Okay? So of course they didn't get any permission yet lah, from the state. They started cultivating and, and they stayed there with their families. Now, then came a time a few years later where the state government of Perak found out yeah, that many people were coming in and so they, they said okay we need to recognize and properly govern this cultivation of the land in Sabrang Perak. So what we'll do is we'll divide the place into lot A, lot B, lot C and lot D. 
and we will give uh, permission for those newcomers. They, these are there are people coming even after seed date settle, yeah. Newcomers to come in and cultivate, yeah. So for the existing those who have been there, like Sid and his friends, the government took the stance that we shall give a notice of eviction because you all came without our permission. Now we're going to give permission to these people. So Sid and his friends got a notice telling them to stop work, pemberhentian kerja, to stop work, and within uh, 30 days to to leave and to vacate the land. Of course, Sid and his friends were unhappy. Yeah, so they went and sent a representative, and Sidi was a rep, to the land office to talk to the DO. Yeah? What is this? We started cultivating first. Yeah? How come the government went and put other people on our land and asked us to leave? Yeah? It's against justice. And so and then they went to meet the apa tu, uh, registrar of titles, pengarah tanah kalian. Many people they went to meet. Lah. Lastly, because they couldn't get any solid help, they went to see a lawyer, and the lawyer advised them to take a group action against the government of Perak. Yeah, so it's Sidi and others versus government of Perak in the High Court. Lah. Yeah. So in the High Court, um, they argued that in, when they went to meet the district officer, the district officer had promised each settler <coughs> three acres of party land subject to successful interviews. And this was what the DO promised them. Tak apa, tak apa, tak apa. It's okay, I'll call each family or each uh, head of the family for an interview. If I see that you have a good case, we'll give you three acres. And that's what the DO promised. So they tried to use this in their arguments in court. There was a promise by the DO who is an officer of the government. Yeah. So you, there shouldn't be a uh, the government should not go against the promise. Secondly, Sidi and his friends argued that a newspaper had published an article, Utusan Zaman Rasa Utusan Malaysia, had published an article stating that the state director of lands and mines had said that each pioneer settler would be given five acres, 33. Now someone higher is saying we'll give five acres to each uh, settler. Yeah, so they didn't use the word squatter, they used the word settler, penduduk, yeah, settler. So these were the arguments. And then, let's see what the government said or what the court said. The government, i.e. the respondents, this had gone up to appeal. Yeah? At first case, uh, Sidi and his friends had won the case. Yeah? So he went up on appeal. And same arguments, the respondents' government applied to strike out the appellant's action on the grounds that the appellant had no cause of action as they were squatters. Yeah? So they tried to just strike out because of the cause of action, yeah? no cause of action. And this was upheld. The federal court, the highest court decided this case, uh, agreed yeah, with the respondents and said that the appellants had no cause of action as they were squatters. Yeah, as they were squatters. And they had no right either in law or in equity. So this answers the question I posed to you just now, do squatters have any right? Federal court in Sidik says no right either in law or in equity. Imagine, that's very harsh. Yeah? Secondly, the federal court, and guess who was the, who was the judge in this case? It was the late Sultan of Fira eh, when he was the chief justice. Yeah? Justice Raja Azlan Shah. Secondly, he held Section 48 of the Code, i.e. NLC, is against them. Against who? Against Sidi and his friends. Yeah? You, you cannot claim to be the first pioneer of the land and all that. Long user does not give you any legal right. Yeah? So that Section 48 is against them. And thirdly, it was held by the Federal Court that the only way to get state land is by way of the 
NLCs. These are very important pronouncements because this case, CDH case, is good law until today. Until today, yeah? when it comes to the position of squatters. Okay? So, any questions on CDH case? You should try and um, look at the report yeah, of CDH case. And I think there will be a tutorial question on this as well, yeah, for you to distinguish between CDH case and another case, which is Buhari's case in the future. Yeah? Um, okay, any questions on CDH case? Is this clear? Clear, yeah? Alright. Let me just see what we have after this before I end the class. Okay. Um, I think I would like to just share with you another case before we end our class. And this is the case of Government of Negeri Sembilan versus Yap Chong Lai. The case coming from Negeri Sembilan. Tadi Pera, eh? Now, Negeri Sembilan. Now, this case is interesting because it uh, gave, uh, well, it supported CDS decision, yeah? But it gave another perspective, yeah? In this case, there were a uh, few settlers, Yap Chong Lan and her friends, neighbors, had been um, had been in occupation of a piece of land in Rahang Kecil, somewhere in Negeri Sembilan. Yeah? And then, the government wanted to build uh, an integrated uh, neighborhood, yeah? which a housing development, lah, yeah? by Lesko Development, a quite famous developer. So the DO asked the, the uh, occupiers, in this case, to move. Can I relocate you somewhere else because the government needs this land? So the DO gave them a piece of land and lots for them to build their house. The government gave electricity, gave water. Yeah? So there, were, there was infrastructure given by the government. Okay? Now later on, that piece of land pun nak diambil. Yeah? The government wanted to take that piece of land for another project. So that's when Yap Chong Lan and her friends went to court and tried to... Um, in this case, they didn't go to court. They were the defendants. The government took action against them to uh, for an order of possession yeah, for them to leave. And they argued in court that the collector had given them lots of land the act of the collector means there has been consent, implied consent for them to be there. Yeah? Also, they argued that the act of the government in local authority in giving water and electricity, public utilities, showed that there was implied consent for them to stay there. Their, their arguments are a bit stronger than the ones in CBS case, okay? Okay. Now, in this case, it was held um, that they they didn't have the right to stay there. They lost their case. They also tried to argue on the basis of estoppel. Eh? They said that the government is stopped from asking us to leave because of the uh, promise or rather consent by the DO and in fact consent by the government in giving utilities. Okay? Court in Yap Chong Lan, federal court juga, yeah, no, Yap Chong Lan. I think it's a high court decision. Yeah? High court decision, uh, the government cited the decision of the federal court in CD. Yeah? So the judge in Yap Chong Lan, Justice Wan Hamza, he said that Yap Chong Lan and friends had no right, either in law or in equity, that the squatters cannot rely on promises or acts by the DO or the collector and land, land office. The squatters cannot rely on public utilities being given to them yeah, by the government. And the squatters cannot invoke the principle of estoppel against the state authority. So they lost the case. So menunjukkan, yeah, it shows how in Malaysia, really, squatters have no right yeah, in law or in equity. Estoppel is an equitable remedy, kan? Court kata tak boleh juga. And they say equity only accepts private uh, parties, not when the government is a party. When the government is a party, no equitable remedy uh, can be invoked. Yeah? 
So I leave you there. Uh, we will continue next Tuesday and I will be going through a few other cases. So please read up in your textbook yeah, the relevant cases. Any questions before we leave? Uh, there are a few students that I need for them to come and see me. I will, can I have the attendance please? Please come and see me after class. <coughs> Amira Natasha Moore. The second person is Muhammad Azrizal, who is not here today. Also, Najla Binti Pamnan. Mushira Said Arshad. These four people come and see me, please. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.